Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Um, here I am at uh, Springfield Basin uh, in Chelmsford, and I'm looking at this um, this lovely view um, of the, the boats and the harbour uh, and uh, the narrow boats and the cruiser here. And um, I'm going to uh, show you how I would treat this. Um, uh, it's it's a rather dull day, um, rather misty. But I'm going to give it a bit of light, and if you notice the tones, although you've got the white boat, you've got quite a lot of light in the water, so um, and the sky is particularly um, cloudy. So I'll just pan around. So that's the view you can see. Uh, and that's what I'm going to put down onto paper. That's my drawing already um, put down. Um, so uh, I'm going to lead you through the painting process. Okay, well here we go, the first washes. Uh, I need a little bit of warmth in the sky, so I'm going to use a red and a yellow. Very weak, and more or less damp the sky with that. There we go. I'm going to try and get this lovely hazy feel. Um, going to, the, the buildings in the distance are going to be not um, greatly important overall. It's, it's a very damp day, so unfortunately it won't dry that quickly. Um, but overall, we, I think we can get a reasonable... Um, uh, and what I do in the sky, I'm just going to put into the water, perhaps even a little bit stronger. Just going to be aware of that white boat. I'm actually going to paint over that boat there, but the white boat is going to be left to remain purely white paper. So that's all you need to do to start with for something like that. Now I'm going to add a nice splash of yellow in there, and then I'm going to trace that through into the water the water running across so it's not flat okay it's quite misty so I'm going to use Indian red with a touch of Prussian blue it's giving me that warm sort of hazy feel that I feel this sort of day That's more or less what this sort of day really is here in Chelmsford um, it's um and you do need to allow the paint to flow when you've got these sort of paintings. Stand the buildings up, make certain they stand upright and uh, nicely um, situated. There we are. So we're trying to pick up that grey look. Now I'm going to go in with Indian Red again with a little cobalt this time. I want to create that sort of dull misty feeling with the sun coming behind a couple of those cloud shapes there so we want around the building to be left now so we've got that lovely warm sort of sunlit effect and a little bit of blue in the distance there we go uh, so that we can achieve that nice feeling of light what you've got to remember is what you put in the sky you need to put into the distance and the water so and I'll sweep that across and I'm also going to put in a sweep of there you go look at that and that lovely sweep of red that's alizarin gone in there and obviously what I do to that I'm going to elaborate into the sky into the water as well so that we get a nice feeling of keep it fairly light there paint around that it's all about tone values with these paintings it really is um, so it's vital that we uh, achieve that and um, I'm going to allow that to completely dry okay well, it's just beginning to dry, so um, now we can concentrate on putting a little bit of distance in. Now, um, 
it's obviously autumn so we need to pick up those autumnal colors um, so I'm going to just um, quite dull in the distance so but even so they're quite warm so we don't want to lose that um, warm feel and I'm going to put them in like that it's still damp oh that's nice it's still a little bit damp well that's useful that will give us a lovely blurred effect there and that side as well there we go look at that you do get a bit of luck sometimes with them um, mind you I would say it's, it's a very very damp day so um, it's not going to dry that quickly anyway just going to stroke a little bit of blue into the distance I want some of them trees to some of those distant trees to be very very blue because if they're not you won't get firmer depth there we go nice bit of blue in the distance there that's lovely that will sink back very very nicely okay so that's that let's just put a little bit more sort of blue into that dull grey blue into that distance there lighten that up a little give that a little bit of strength there you go right now I'm going to do the buildings and these are just going to be lost within the um, uh, the sky and what have you um, they're going to be quite cool in colour get a bit of movement there because these are going to be very very loosely painted because we don't want we want these to blur into the distance and we don't want these to to dominate at all so a bit of perspective there a bit of color now this one will have a little bit more strength to it a bit more red in there and um, we're going to paint the roofs as well but you'll notice it's all if this picture is going to be all about the boats in the foreground it's going to be nothing much to do with the, the buildings at all so that's why I'm keeping them nice and soft nice and cool nice and grey sort of grey blues colour leave one or two little patches possibly indicating windows which is always a good thing to do when you're painting this sort of subject but it, I'm, I'm really looking to mist a lot of misting in the distance there for these buildings so um, quite likely um, it's, it will all sort of blend back eventually a bit of light onto that one. I want them all to sink back into the distance. Uh, this is a little darker. I'll add more blue in the mix to that just to try and get a sense of a building that's a little closer to us, a little nearer than um, that one. It's always nice to have a little bit of strength to some of these buildings. And that one goes off to the left with the roof area like that just suggested that roof area just suggested um, good now while that's drying now we're going to concentrate on the boats themselves and these are just going to be we're looking at cobalt blue really for for one of them that's that one there so let's just use pure cobalt blue almost um, and that's going to be treated that going to be a bit more detailed with this one with these uh, with these boats because they do require um, to have a little bit more detail to them always a good thing to do this bit is still wet so that's that'll be okay we just go with the flow really um, go so that's the first one put in um, the next one is rather dull so I'm using Prussian well I don't know let's use cobalt a touch of Prussian with a bit of Indian red 
that should do the trick for this very dull blue grey um, I'll rub that across the top um, there is some decoration to that but I'm not going to get into that at this point blurred on the top there that's nice and obviously the light side I'm going to make somewhat weaker in colour because that bit of spreading down of the paint I'm leaving the windows white at this stage it's all sort of first washes so it'll all um, come together later on there we go um, that's good oh and of course that then comes around here that's a hull of the boat like that drops down away like that comes up and across leave a small bead of white there there you go that's that lovely narrow boat well it's actually a, um, a wide beamed vessel this one so that um, seems to work quite well and this one here is considerably darker so let's just give Get, make that a little bit darker. The hull on that is almost black, but um, we'll tend to that. We need another wash on there later on. There you go. So that's that. There you go, that's looking good. Okay, just a little bit of attention now to an, an area that has. Uh, a little bit more autumn-y sort of greens to it just before it dries there we go and that then shapes up that area there we'll put a little bit in there it's not drying very quickly which is to some extent to my advantage really there we go um, and that, well, let's just lose this little bit here because we don't want, we want it light but we don't want to highlight that at all so that can run into the building as such and down into the water as a gantry there and also this area here really I'm trying to pick up the feeling of this of the day really you know, the way the light is very very sort of dull light good okay and the light boat yes do have a little bit of blue in the canopy um, it's only dull blue but I'll give that just a little bit more room colour there like that and of course it runs down the back like well so we allow that to completely dry so that's the next stage of the picture okay well because it's not drying very quickly it's a bit of a breeze now so it should turn dry I'm going to put in a bit of detail in the uh, boats themselves um, for instance the um, window areas um, that's an area that we can work in um, while it's drying um, we've got some some windows there within the canopy of that one. Oh, we've got some sort of um, half round windows there, so we'll pop those in. Um, boats begin to look like boats. The well, same with buildings, really. Once you get windows and doors and all that sort of business in, and um, so it's always um, a good thing to, to get those in fairly soon. Um, in these windows I'm going to reflect a bit of the sky. So I'm going to have a bit of yellow and a bit of red. I could use almost any yellow and red for that. That would be too brilliant but let's just um, put in a bit of reflection of the, of the sky for those. Well, let's make that one. There we go. Not religiously copying every uh, part of this um, 
of the boat. So I'm trying to create a picture. I'm not um, not looking at all to um, to um, copy exactly what I see. I'm trying to make it uh, better than it actually is, really. Now there's the lovely bridge over the canal there. So I'm going to paint that in uh, in uh, quite a, a warm colour. Um, always useful um, because that's in the distance. It's just beginning to dry now, so that's useful. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more to the background before I concentrate on finishing the uh, the boats off. Um, first thing I need to do is just to sort of see how we're getting on in the centre there. It needs to be darkened, I think. So let's darken that up with a bluey grey colour. Um, it needs to be quite earthy. So we're going to use some burnt sienna for this because it is autumn. Uh, so that's the um, that's the idea of it. There we go. A little bit of burnt sienna in there. These are the trees or hedging that's much closer to us. Um, so you'll always see that. That runs along the bank there. And there's a little bit along the bank there. there we go. So that's a bit more. We'll hold the line now of the boats because they're going to be somewhat lighter as we come further forward we're getting a little darker leave that bead of white on top of that boat always useful um, thing to do and there's sort of like a, an area there where we can define the top of that boat there we go just another tree standing up Okay, now the next thing we need to look at is the um, buildings themselves. I'm going to get some windows in um, fairly loosely, in fact, very loosely. Finishing there, um, we've got one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, and then we've got one two three these are where the balconies are and you've got then another one there another one there another one there but as i say these i'm not making a great deal of these um they can be treated very very simply um the um simpler they're painted the better it is for the final outcome to be fair so um right that's that um is that gantry area there, gantry there, gantry there. So that's the inside, inside and inside of that. So it's more or less in shadow. That's how you define the, the shadow area. Uh, and, then, and then of course this will then take the slightly darker area because that's the left hand side there. And uh, now we can just put in the the windows, uh, sort of like one there, one there, one there. Just hold the shape as best as possible. But um, as I say, like all these things, the more detailed you get in one area, the more you need to show in another. So it's always best um, not to uh, be too detailed, really. Uh, and and then we've got a gantry area there. Uh, we've got a pillar there. And that's that be all in shadow. And then we've got the side of the key there. Good, good, good. So that's more or less that. Uh, next area will be just picking up one or two uh, windows, a bit of gantry there, um, something there, just a bit of architectural detail there. If we finish on top of the that area there, it's a bit like that. Just, just really suggesting. That's all we're doing. Um, oh, there's a gantry there, there, there. Um, that's a wall area. Um, very suggestive, really, because that's um, um, really um, 
the only way to treat this, I think, this morning. It's very, very, um, it's like a wall area there. And that comes towards us. I said, okay, that's plenty, that's sufficient for that. Just a blue area in the distance. Now, always nice just to pick up a little bit, one or two little, maybe a bit powerful that, but, um, Just to show that there's something going on there in the distance. There you go. And there is a uh, an area of a building there. Stands up. Stands up. That's across. There we go. That's all that's required for that. Okay. Now we can start looking at detail on the uh, on the boats themselves. And I say detail, but it's not going to be a great deal of detail. Um, it's more or less tone really just to get up the, 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 the darker areas and for that I'm going to use Prussian blue and Olizu and Crimson and that's an interesting colour to use when you're trying to quickly uh, paint areas um, and that will go in there that will go across there to show the top of that boat it's also going down there and it's going over the door as well and over that corner so that will determine that area then we're going to then paint in the windows in that colour and that's it and then a little bit of shaping for the top I'm using this now to, to um, highlight and line areas really that's a window area so that's going in there like that and this is where we begin slowly but surely to see um, the image of the boats coming forward and um, there we go and then we can start lining that area there this is darker because it's round the corner so, uh, is that's it. There we go. And this has a darker element to it. So we're going to use a slightly different blue for this. And we're going to shape it down. It's coming round like that. There we go. And that shapes around like that. It tells us where it sits into the into the water. Just, just suggesting really. There's one or two markings, a bit of detail within the boat there, but I'm not. It's one line there and one line there. But other than that, I'm not going to put too much of that in. And uh, now we're going to look at the um, sort of shading, really, of the um, of this uh, of the hull of that boat. Although it's white, it's showing up dark dark blue against the um, I'm going to leave that a little bit well perhaps not it's, you know sometimes less is more when you're painting but uh, leave that like that there go. and now I'm going to pick up the um, a bit more blue a bit more crimson a little bit darker now um, and I want to show, you know, some, some additional sort of detailing for these windows. Um, just as a suggestion that there's a bit of light um, hitting those. There we go. And of course that would be dark as well. That would all be in shadow. There we go. That's looking quite good. Certain that doesn't stay in the sky. Good, good, good. So we'll, uh, that's drying very, very nicely now. So finally, uh, it's not a great deal to do really. I'm going to pick up some really dark colour using Prussian and Indian red. 
before, well not really dark, but I'll need a bit more, that's a bit too dark really, a bit more blue in the mix, there we are. Um, not too worried about colours really. There is a bit of a, sort of like a gantry area here, which um, you can see, um, which obviously I think I'll put in because it's traditional for these boats. And um, a line there and a line there, a uh, little bit of decoration on the uh, front of the boat. Uh, and obviously there's a mooring line, which mooring rope that's quite important and a lovely uh, shall we put the blue fender in I suppose I can get that in there really it's always um, interesting to hang these fenders down um, there's none on the other ones oh there's quite a nice um, gantry running around there but although that will probably get lost within the um, within the wash now, but there you go, we're not really worried, um, that's that, now the top here we've got a little bit of, you know, I'm, I'm suggesting, I'm not, I'm far from painting everything in, you know, um, it really is a, a matter of, um, of suggesting everything that's going on within that um, you know I'm just trying to to give a, a real loose sort of suggestion of windows and uh, whatever's going on really uh, right just put that down there because that they always use for that. That's good. Yep. So um, um, now, finally, I'm just going to put in um, a little bit more in the way of um, of detail. Now, I'm going to put in burnt umber with cobalt blue, just to suggest um, a little bit more detail on this boat here. So it's just one or two little areas where it's vital that we we just sharpen sharpen up. That's it. Um, little areas there, just where it sits into the water. There is an area there where that sits into the water. It's always useful to um, to put these in. Um, pull that line through again to show that um, just put that across there like that just to show the top of the boat like that paint that in a little darker I think because that does need it there we go make that nice and dark gives that lovely feeling of depth then and then we go the same with this here we paint the dark area in there it comes down to there it comes down to there like that to the corner of that it shows up the, the corner of that boat which is always a good thing to do you know I'm just I'm just trying to pick up edges now just so as we can see the boats themselves rather than um, varying um, sections. There we are, we can see those lovely clearly against um, the background. Um, a bit more red, red and a bit more, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to introduce some additional colours in here really now. Because it does need to have some colour. Um, a bit more blue, perhaps cobalt blue going in here just to suggest a shadow which is always uh, a good thing to do and that swings around and you've got to remember this is a gradual turn and to show that we just need to soften that like that and all of a sudden you've got 
a gradual turn rather than um, a complete um, sharp edge. There we go. And we will have now this shadow on there. Yeah, that's in shadow like that and that will then be in some form of shadow slightly weaker that's it that's brilliant okay now we need to allow that to dry before I start with the um, with the reflection Okay, well it's quite a simple process now of uh, finishing this one off um, and um, quite simply putting in the water reflections. Well, I'm going to start off in the distance with a very weak greeny grey. It doesn't want to be too, um, too strong at all. Um, and uh, we'll have probably a reflection of the bridge like that and then bit of reflection of the always keep your reflections running across the water that's my tip really just spread that on your hand and your finger don't want to lose too much of this lovely one well, it will pick up the edge of that um, don't want to lose too much of the um, of the feeling of water so it's all a matter of rippling really there we go so that more or less picks up the, the corner of that boat that um, um, uh, the corner of that boat really that did get lost a little so it's uh, we pick that up okay now we move on to more stronger parts um, first fairly strong use a Prussian blue for this with a touch of burnt sienna to get a nice sort of dark bluey green reflection. May put a little bit of um, Naples yellow in that. Let's put a bit of cadmium, that's better. Because we need a dark sort of green. Let's put a bit of red in it too because I want it to have a bit of warmth um, similar to what the sky is. And all we do, I'm only going to do the holes to start with, so it's just a quick sweep across, just to give a sense of um, reflection, and the same where this one is. Very nice. There we go. Look at that. Look. It's no more, no more difficult than that. Very nice. Yes. Is, um, are you going to sell it as a Hockney? Um, <laughs> um, I could do, couldn't I? I think, could. yeah. If I were to sign at Hockney, do you reckon I'd get away with that? It's very good. Yeah, yes. I wish I could do that. Well, it's just a matter of practice, yeah. really. Well. Thank you. There we go, and uh, and then of course that comes to a point where the uh, where the the hull is and you just sweep that through like that and that's really all you need to do for the reflection of the white boat and we continue now with the reflection of the um, of the hull of this one here and this is where you can get it to sit in the water exactly where you require it because you can bring the uh, reflection up considerably um, and this gives a sense of the shape of the hull in the reflection too. So it's always useful to remember to make your reflections long enough, deep enough. So first thing is the hull of the boat in the reflection. Then you'll get the cabin. There we go. Bring that up like that. Now we get uh, the the hull of the boat is a little bit lighter as it comes around the corner, so I've weakened the reflection. Uh, don't want to weaken it too much, but that's 
And notice how I'm leaving some little patches of unpainted um, colour. And now I'm going to go in with a blue, so a bit more blue into that mix now, because this will give the reflection of the cabin area of that one there. Need just to put that in, just to give it a bit of, don't, you know, not vital, but it's uh, always useful thing to do. And the cabin of that one there. But I'm not going to overdo this, because it's um, always, uh, a thing where you can soon overdo your reflections and um, then in the foreground this nice bluey green will be used um, quite weak now just to um, perhaps give a an overall feeling of movement in the water it's there take off the white paper you know I want to I want them to, to get lost in the um, overall feel of the of the scene, you know. It's, um, and then just some little ripples areas in the foreground, just to suggest there is good movement in the water, which there is today. Not a great deal, but a little bit of movement there, um, and. Um, Lovely bit of white paper, don't mind that at all. I'm um, just going to quickly finish with some fine detail on top of the boats themselves, but nothing too, uh, too um, strong, but just a little bit of detail to the, um, just to give them a bit of authenticity really. Um, and that really is the way uh, to produce these um, these lovely sort of barges as I say we're at Springfield um, Basin in Chelmsford um, lovely area uh, to uh, to paint uh, and um, we go just show the top of that show the arc of that it's right um, I was um, haven't been down here painting um, for some time really but um, it is a lovely um, area to uh, to paint um, sort of thing that people very often overlook you know their their towns and villages really where they um, live they tend to go miles to um, to get uh, a scene where in lots of cases it's on their doorstep um, it's just seeing it really um, and um, just a bit of gantry there of course that would have reflection as well um, also be a bit of a walkway there there you go so that really um, probably is about as far as I'm going to go on site I shall leave it an hour when I get home and um, um, perhaps bring in one or two other little touches um, but um, overall um, pretty much happy with that before I finish here I'm just going to remove that um, masking tape because it always is a good thing to do I think I've mentioned this many times before um, it's tearing the paper a little because it's still rather damp you've got to be very very careful we don't tear the picture um, may be mounted later but at this stage it's uh, but once you remove that you begin to see um, exactly the uh, sort of image that you've completed really um, I'd recommend that you do put this edge in round I mean you can obviously use a um, a mount to put over the top I mean that's quite a quite a good thing to do but overall um, if you use that as a uh, as a mount then um, you know you begin to see what you've done fairly quickly um, as I say it does need one or two finishing touches but overall um, uh, there's the view that uh, I um, 
tried to capture this morning. Um, as I say, it's one or two things to be done when I get home, one or two little finishing touches. Um, but um, overall, I was quite happy with that. Um, seemed to come off particularly well. Um, and uh, I'll show you uh, the finishing touches that I do um, when I uh, return home. But it's been a lovely uh, morning, bit of brightness now. And uh, that's how you paint um, the barges at Springfield Basin in Chelmsford. Okay, well I've arrived back in the studio and um, all ready just to do one or two little finishing touches. Now, I always say when you paint it outside, um, get some colour on, get the basis in there. Um, maybe it doesn't want touching anymore, but go home, let it completely dry, then come back and have a last look to see whether there is anything else that you feel um, needs um, um, just another wash of colour really and um, I just feel perhaps we need a little bit of sense of um, uh, some form of shadow onto these background buildings don't want to take away from the foreground because I think as it is it's quite quite good um, but there are one or two little there's there'd be a small shadow there just to give a weak effect of light coming from the, the right hand side a little bit under there um, perhaps a tad on the windows just to give that little bit of soft light effect there is gantries that stand out there so let's bang those in I think they run right the way across there if I remember rightly. Those sort of things that that do tend to um, to give the to give it a little bit more interest. Don't want to take away from the foreground, um, but that's um, that's more or less the way I see it. That's a little bit strong, so let's just watch that a little bit there. Make it just a little bit wider, a bit darker underneath. And that's all you need to do really that sort of thing you know just to to give it a bit of depth there we go and um, then we need perhaps a little bit more shadow under there a little bit more under there under there under there um, a little bit more depth Um, so basically, um, let's get a bit, bit of perspective into that, still not enough perspective there, a bit of perspective there, get the perspective rise and then we should um, pretty much be there, there we go, um, don't want to do too much that it runs out of picture, um, maybe a little touch there and there, Touch there and there, there, just to give that a bit more of a feeling of, um, there we go, let's do that, and under there, under there, under there, under there, and also down there, because that's got a bit of colour requirement there, it runs out of picture bit of shadow work coming across from the boat not a great deal um, but overall that really is um, about all that's required on that one quite happy with the way it's um, it's worked out it's um, sort of let's make those a little darker not too dark just a little bit of strength there um, quite happy with the way that's worked out all seems to have gone off um, pretty good um, and um, just need signing really and I just do that in my normal way to say I normally sign with the paint that I've used and um, that does help um, 
perhaps one day when these are um, pulled down from the attic and someone says, ah, oh, that's is that an original. Um, and they can obviously test the paint and see that it is um, the original um, paint used to sign it. Okay then, so that's um, Springfield Basin in Chelmsford, Essex. Hope you've enjoyed that. Please stay tuned to my channel. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, please do so. And don't forget to click the bell. Um, click on the bell because that will give you um, notifications uh, of uh, anything else I do. Okay then, thank you very much for watching.